Welcome back students to Chemistry 1510 video notes. This is our last installment of chapter four where we talk about oxidation reduction reactions in more detail. So we just looked at oxidation numbers and now let's find out how to use them. So what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of practice where we'll look first at letter A here. And we're gonna first assign oxidation reduction reaction or numbers before we do anything else. So let's assign hydrogen an oxidation number of zero because it's in its natural state. Copper two oxide is an ionic compound and oxygen has a minus two oxidation number. So that means copper has to have a plus two in order to cancel that out. That was rule five. Then copper in the products has an oxidation number of zero. And then water, the oxidation number of oxygen is gonna be a negative two and hydrogen is gonna be a plus one. So let's focus in on, uh, let's do copper. So if we look at copper, notice how copper is a plus two in the reactant side and a zero in the product side. So going from a plus two to a zero means that copper gained two electrons. So let's look up here. Do you see how it says gain of electrons? Reduction happens when something gains electrons. So the Cu in CuO, or you could write Cu2 plus, is reduced because it gained electrons. Uh, or another way to say it is that it decreased an oxidation number, right? Because it's always really confusing when the word is reduction, yet you've gained something. So the word reduction and probably more closely associates with the decrease in the oxidation number, meaning getting closer to zero, meaning you added something negative. So let's look at what else is changing. So the hydrogen here is a zero and the hydrogen here is a plus one. So that means H2 is oxidized. It increased an in oxidation number, right? Becoming more positive, which means it lost electrons. Notice how oxygen didn't change. Right? That's pretty normal, right? Some, they're only gonna have two elements that end up changing oxidation number during the course of the reaction. So the thing that is um, reduced is also called the oxidizing agent and the thing that is oxidized is called the reducing agent. So there's a couple more here to practice if you want to practice them. Um, otherwise, we will practice in class. So let's look at some more specific reaction types. Now that we can use those oxidation numbers, tell if something's being oxidized or reduced, let's look at all the different ways we can see oxidation reduction reactions. So what you're going to do for exam two is you're going to be asked to classify reactions. So if I give you a reaction, you're gonna tell me if it's a combination, a decomposition, a combustion, or a single replacement. And then specifically for single replacement reactions, this one, like metathesis or metathesis, you're going to be able to predict the products for these reactions. Yeah, you can also predict the products for combustion reactions, right? They're, they're pretty typical. Um, you end up forming carbon dioxide and water most of the time. You probably have enough knowledge to actually predict the products for decomposition and combination reactions without us even talking about it. So the other ones, I'm just going to let you see the patterns when you're ready to tell what makes something a combination reaction, what makes something a decomposition reaction, and so on. So I want to focus on the hard part. That's predicting re uh, products for a single replacement reaction. So let's look at a single placement play action, reaction's general pattern. So you start with some lonely compound, and then you add to that, um, I'm sorry, I said lonely compound, lonely metal, right? That's your lonely metal, A. And then you add to that some compound. 
And what ends up happening is if A is strong enough, it can take the place of B. So see how only one thing is replacing something else? That's why we call this single replacement reactions. In our metathesis reactions, two things were swapping. So let's talk about how you know if a single replacement reaction is going to happen. So when you look at a single replacement reaction, you need to assess how strong the two metals are in relationship to one another. And that's going to be using the activity series. The activity series is given. This is not something you will memorize. So if we look at this activity series, which is a shortened one, notice how over here we have things that blow up in water, and down here we have our precious metals. That means that this side is more reactive. So what we mean by that is if you uh, put two compound or two metals together, um, the lonely one needs to be more reactive. So if your lonely metal is on this side of the activity series and the metal in the compound is on this side, then you're going to see a reaction. So for example, we find rubidium, Rb, and where is it on here? Oh, oh wow, quite reactive. Rubidium is here, manganese is here. Because rubidium is higher on the activity series, it can replace uh, manganese. Whereas if we look at manganese versus potassium, here's manganese and here's potassium. See how manganese is lower on the activity series? Manganese is not strong enough to replace potassium. So let's look at how these reactions are going to be written and how you're going to use the activity series. So let's focus on the molecular form right now. When we look at this example, we see iron. And then I also see gold, Au. So this one is our lonely metal. We need to look to see if the lonely metal is higher on the activity series than the one in the compound. So we come back up to our activity series and let's find iron, right here it is, and we find gold. Here's gold. So indeed iron is higher on the activity series, so that means iron can kick out gold and form a compound. So that means gold is now going to be alone in the reaction flask, and it's going to be a solid. And then you have to write a correct formula for um, iron and nitrate coming together. So this, when I said this was a partial activity series, one of the things that it's missing is telling you what charge iron forms during these reactions. Because iron can form a plus two or a plus three, during these reactions, iron forms a plus three. So let's talk about what's going to go on in your brain uh, as you're writing uh, the formula for the iron nitrate compound. You're going to look at the activity series, which I'm going to give you an updated one, and it's going to tell you that you're going to make an iron 2 plus ion. You need to know that nitrate is NO3 minus, so that you need to be able to take these, put them together, and write a correct chemical compound. So you come in, you write iron 3 nitrate, and now you're ready to double back and balance. So see how you have three uh, nitrates here and you have two here? What's the lowest common multiple between two and three? Well, that would be six. So I need to make six nitrates by putting a three in front of here and six nitrates by putting a two in front of there. Well, that certainly messes up my gold and my iron. So I'm gonna fix that with some more coefficients. So now I'm going to finalize this by coming in and putting in my AQ for aqueous because I know my solubilities rules say that nitrates are always soluble, no matter what. Let's save the net ionic form for class because that part can be really confusing. Let's do one more example and then we'll be done. So uh, let's do this first one. So when we look at this first one, We'll look at the activity series uh, and find silver and hydrogen. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to scroll up here to find my silver and hydrogen. So let's find silver and hydrogen. 
So silver, silver. Oh, I found hydrogen. There's hydrogen. And there's silver. So my silver was my lonely metal. All right, here's my lonely metal. The hydrogen is in a compound. So in order for this reaction to happen, the silver has to be higher on the activity series than hydrogen. And it wasn't. So that means this is a no reaction. All right, because the lonely metal must be higher on the activity series than the metal in the compound. if a reaction is to occur. Let's make that R of Rxn look nicer. Great. Now, if you're an astute chemist, you're probably thinking, wait a moment, hydrogen's not a metal. You're right. Hydrogen is not typically classified as a metal, but hydrogen can behave both as a nonmetal and a metal. So in this case, we're calling it metal-like. So this one's a big old no reaction. Um, if you try the next one, you should get a uh, reaction for this one. And so I'll let you give that one a try, and we will reconvene in class. As always, thank you so much for your attention. This is Katoni, signing out.